so much for taking the time talking with me, um, Jose. Sure thing, buddy. Yeah, I'm so excited to uh, hear more about you. So the podcast is about, you know, we go with the flow weddings. We just kind of like start off with like the story and then we'll go from there and create some magic. I'm so excited to be able to hear your story. Yeah, buddy. Thank you for inviting me. Appreciate yeah. it. And you, uh, I've been watching your Instagram and then following your work. Uh, you've done some amazing accomplishments uh, with what you've done as a photographer, you know. I I scrolled through your website. I saw a, a bunch of things like you also have your workshop and then, you know, like um, a, a background of your story. And also one thing that stood out to me was uh, Spain, you know, it, it shows Spain. So it, it, it seems like you have a few of um, a portfolio in Spain. Tell me more about that. Like, how did you even get into the, you know, photographing in Spain? I'd love to hear more about that. Well, that's part of the story now, isn't it? yeah <laughs> um yeah so so spain was um it's always been kind of like a fascinating place and uh, in, in, in like in my in my mind right like um i went to school for economics and i studied spanish mm -hmm. and um all throughout then never went to spain or anything like that and uh you know actually first time going to spain was like with um with my wife after we got married and um so yeah like uh you know when i first started with photography i guess the like, kind of like the big entry into spain was uh was a uh, another workshop actually mm -hmm. it's uh the wolves workshop okay and that one's run by pablo Iglesias and you know his his friends over there and so um went over there and, and made some pretty cool connections and mm -hmm. i just you know kept those connections going and you know one thing led to another and you know folks visited here and visited there and that sort of thing and so um we were able to stay connected which is really cool uh, so so it, it all started from a workshop that you went on spain you were you were kind of just like oh you want to do this workshop in spain and pretty much you've been filming like i mean uh, photographing um weddings there because of connections yeah um, I, I would say like um it was the year was 2017 and um you know, at the time I was, you know, full time into teaching, right? So uh, mm -hmm. I taught for eight years, uh, pretty what much. What did you teach, by the way? Um, I taught history. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I was teaching history, um, and you know, it was 2017, and you know, started to get, you know, my feet wet in in photo, mm -hmm. and so as a beginner, you know, and as a teacher, one of the things that I knew about myself and if you want to do anything well is you kind of have to you know get get good training and get a good basis about you know about the work and and what it means and the craft and how to learn and grow and so I started researching some places and workshops and this one was you know kind of like called out to me and the energy called out to me and so um so I went right and then just kept that connection going mm -hmm. um you know stayed connected with the community a little bit and um you know kind of like one connection leads to another like as we know like in our in our industry it's like fairly small right and so mm -hmm. you know if, if you know somebody and you know they introduce you to somebody else and pretty soon everybody starts connecting and so that was essentially how it how it happened and 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 yeah like i'm lucky enough to be able to go there and visit some people and then vice versa you know when mm -hmm. it come here kind of visit here so 2017, that's when you kind of, you know, started. Um, I could imagine, you know, what it is like having a workshop back in 2017, because I feel I haven't been in the industry for, um, for a while. I'm sure you have. And I could, I, if I go on my Instagram, I see a lot of workshops. Was it the same as back then, like the workshops are and towards now, like what the workshops are? I'm assuming there's more workshops nowadays for photography. Yeah. I mean, like, I think today there are, if you want to learn something, then there, you can probably find some, one, like a resource for it, two, somebody to teach it to you, and three, probably there's a, you know, some sort of class or workshop um, that targets that specific thing that you want to learn about, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, if, um, is your question like, how have workshops evolved over the course of time is that like what you're yeah, like 27 i could imagine like 2017 i'm imagining like is there was there a, a lot of workshops that for photography compared to 
what we have now? I mean, in that three years or four years, did you see a change or was it kind of just the same? I think, you know, I think the amount of workshops has grown mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, photography in, in many ways was kind of like democratized, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of people started to gain more access to, to, you know, the industry. Mm -hmm. um, which is, I think it's, I think it's a good thing, right? That pe more people feel um, that they can be creative and they can be photographers, they can be self-starters and such. And so, um, you know, I think with that influx of people, there was also kind of like a kind of a motivation, right? To, mm -hmm. to, to get some good um, professional development out there, if you want to call it that, because that's what it is, right? It's professional development. And, um, and people started to, look for workshops and when they saw a need that you know maybe another workshop did not quite meet then those folks maybe launched their own workshop right mm -hmm. and so you you saw this kind of like growth in, in workshops both uh both uh in the east coast west coast europe and i'm sure beyond mm -hmm. i want to go I'll, I'll go back into this but i want to ask you like the type of work that you put out first of all your work's amazing and like the style and feel of it is such like unique and like mysterious i would say my, my if i was watching it i would say mysterious and i've been looking at your work you know like um on instagram or even your website but where where did the work um where did you develop the type of style and feel of your work because was it because you went to spain or like what like how did you find the style that you have because it's so unique and like there's something to it you know the feel of it the mysterious feel <laughs> Yeah, that's that's how I would say. I love I love your work, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, gosh, how do I develop? How did I get? Where did I get the style? I'm not sure how to answer the question. Um, maybe. Okay. So, so so part of that is is um, you know when when we were teachers, my wife and I, um, we we very quickly figured out that you know if we save up during the year, and 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 not spend that much money that in the summer, then we can kind of like splurge a little bit and travel, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like, you know, that's a privilege that like a lot, a lot of people do not have, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, we decided, hey, you know, it would be a cool idea to do that. And I don't know, maybe just seeing different places and different spaces and seeing the different energies that, that you know, those places have combined maybe with like, you know, every, every place has a different vibe and different light and, and that sort, right? And so just paying attention to that and trying to have that enter into the, the photograph as much as possible right mm -hmm. um and i think maybe when it, when it comes to right so we work with couples right when it comes to couples it's um more along the lines of like what is the energy that they're that they have and can you can you show that energy um in in the photo that you're you're taking right like mm -hmm. um that's how i see it right it's not me like I'm not trying to create a masterpiece or anything like that. I'm just trying to maybe portray as honestly as possible the energy that mm -hmm. I see. And um, yeah, sometimes I catch a flare here and there. You know? <laughs> I, I like you mentioned like the energy and like what, how the couple put like, you know, the energy of the couple you capture. And I was looking through your website. You did mention like the, you know, like the about me page, like telling about like you, you there was a quote that I love it. It kind of met, it seems like the quote really like uh, talks about you, like how you're speaking right now. It seems like it's your words on that website. It, I think it was like, um, you feel good. Like it was like a quote. I think it was a uh, feel good. What's the other one? Uh, True to yourself. I think there you did like a poetry. That's what the word, yeah. And it seems so true to yourself. It seems like you're like that. Like I'm talking to you right now. I could see that, that you're trying to, you know, put your, you know, your, I guess your words into the website. And I do see that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I mean, just be as genuine as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, um, not even as possible, just be genuine, period, right? Like, a, if, if anything, just be honest and genuine and, and that will take you much farther than, you know, a cool picture. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're, I know you're Filipino and you put that on your Instagram. Um, tell me more about that. Um, are you still fluent? Uh, can you still fluent speaking um, in the language, the native language, the motherland? <laughs> what language are you referring to? Um, Tagalog or, I, I spoke, I spoke uh, um, Tagalog and Visayas fluently. I was just wondering right. if you still speak those. 
We can, we can. Magtatagawag ba tayo, ha? <laughs> oh my God, um, that is so cool. So you can fluently still speak in Tagalog. I would say I would say I'm not fluent anymore because you know, with like with anything, um, especially languages, you, mm. if you don't practice it every day, uh, then you it, it kind of like goes a little bit into the shadows, and you know, you start to not forget, but like it's not as fluid, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, like I think my my Tagalog needs some work, you know. <laughs> Congrats to you because you can still speak it and also you, you can still remember how to speak it just because your accent right now, I could not tell that you, could, you still speak in Tagalog, you know, that's pretty cool that you were able to say that fluently. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I, like, um, I was born in the Philippines, right, uh, and we came to the U.S. in 1995. How old were so you? I was 11. Oh, okay. That's the same thing as me. <laughs> I came here to the U.S. at 11 years old. And I'm 24 now. And how old are you? 35. Went 25. 35. Okay, you look you look younger. That's why I said 25. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I shave this off, I can pass for 18 or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So um, Jose uh, Melgar Melgarejo, that's your um, photo uh, photography name. Um, what were you doing when you were like 11 years old? Like, what was life then? When what, did you go to straight to New York? And what was it like? Yeah. So. Um, my my mom um she was the one who like came first to the us right like mm -hmm. um, like many uh filipino um not everybody but like a lot of, of filipino families that i know um you know their their parents one or both of them maybe or maybe another family member came first and then you know they were able to set the stage for um for bringing the rest of the family over so my mom was a nurse and she is still as a nurse and she um you know got uh, placement here out in the East Coast, right? And so she worked in DC, um, ended up working in New Jersey, like um, in the Oranges. And then um, at the time she was working in the South Bronx. And, um, you know, just saved up enough money for for us as a family to to be able to come over. And, and um, in 95, like that's when we were able to you know, come over here into, into the US. And that was uh, an interesting time, right? Like, uh, um, it, it it it's and everything's like culture shock as you can imagine right you're, you're like this this kid and, and you're like third grade or fourth grade and and uh and you, you come to the u.s and like boom wow everything's like just big and clean mm -hmm. and cold like and cold like literally like like um weather temperature wise like kind of cold right and so that was that was kind of it like we were you know um my my both my parents worked really hard and um you know fortunate enough to to you know have them as like supportive and you know put us through school and stuff and kind of like you know follow follow the advice to to climb the ladder as as you as you might imagine um it's like hey go to school get your degree you know all that stuff and um, which you did you went you became a became a history teacher professor well before that i was in i was in consulting uh, so i was like in the business world for for a little bit so i Mm -hmm. um, straight out of straight out of university, I uh, graduated into the to the recession, which was not not the best time to to graduate as like a, a person with zero experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, I was able to um, to get a consultant job and uh, worked as an analyst for a few years, and then got another degree in teaching because um, you know my wife was a teacher, but she's like a teacher all throughout, and um, kind of like was really interested in like what she was doing and she was like hey you know what why don't you just try it and go to school and do it and i did it was like you know really really fun and probably one of the, the most influential eight years of my life was uh, in the classroom working with kids so. mm -hmm. and you mentioned you went for consulting and you were a teacher as well i i'm curious kind of like did you get anything out of like being a consultant or teacher to your like photography um your business right now or like I, I know you're also like um holding a workshop but did you get what 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 was the outtake that you got from those you know experiences towards now yeah, so i think um one of the takeaways from from being an analyst was like kind of like from a business mindset right mm -hmm. if you're if you want to launch a business and you want to you know try to see if, if if projects are feasible and you know, all that like roi financial analysis stuff like that um kind of plays a part now in in the way i um on the business end right like that that sort 
and then you know teaching is essentially uh um it's it's like a, a psychology essentially right mm -hmm. and so you walk into a room and you read the energy of the room and based on that energy and and what your objectives are and what you want to convey um you act a certain way and you are able you're you're move with that energy in a certain in a certain way and so if you think about a wedding right you walk into um a room uh, with folks getting ready right you read the energy of the room and you have to take pictures right? so you have to have a certain storyline objective and based on that energy read you move and act a certain way to get the best story um, and so i think there are parallels right from the consulting world and the business aspect to the teaching world which is like you know um learning about people and uh that that apply right and you can pull experience from from everything really mm -hmm. and um i think that's a beautiful thing about like working in different spaces and and being um kind of open to to growing it's like you could pull from all these different places mm -hmm. and um piece it together and all of a sudden you're like wow that that experience actually did really well for me right it's, it's it wasn't a waste of time it was actually a great investment in time right mm -hmm. um I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, I mean, you. I just yeah. saw that you're not, you know, like because I saw your um, your Instagram. I saw that you held uh, workshops, uh, which is the rum, rum, rumble workshop. Is that how you say it? Yeah. And I I've been following your um, page, and I see people are are you know following you because I I could tell that you know they see your work as inspiration, and I feel like you know they once they see your work, they, if they wanna create work like yourself, I feel like. You know they'll look into your workshop i feel like you have been a you know an inspiration to a lot of uh, creatives that are wanting the same feel and style that you're creating and yeah i'm you know like <clears throat> yeah i've been following your rumble workshop like my question is to you like <clears throat> i know there's so many workshops out there what is uh, what's your workshop like tell me more a little bit about your workshop like what's different about it like what are you you know um what do you want the creatives to go to your workshop like what what do you want them to feel like after the workshop what do you want them to accomplish from joining your workshop um so maybe like if i could tell a little bit about how rumbo started that yeah, could, yeah, of course i'd love you know, to hear it too. a little bit of the context could you know might be able to shed light on like what the workshop yeah, could feel like love to hear it. um so um my wife and I had been married for, you know, um, like uh, five years, right, at, at the time. And um, and we were busy with work and, and, and everything. And so um, we had never, we never took the, like a big trip to celebrate it. And so like on the sixth year, um, we decided that, hey, we're going to do this cool thing and, and, you know, go to Iceland, right? And um, so we did. So we booked our flights and that sort. And I was like, well, I'm going to bring my camera. Right, I'm gonna bring my camera, um, and we get some cool pictures because it's Iceland, and that's what you do in Iceland. It's like you you, you, you enjoy and 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 you explore and and you, you kind of like connect with the the world and and nature and like almost you know, it's, and and you take some cool pictures, right? Um, but then we realize, hey, you know what? Like, there's, it's uh, it's just gonna be like either me taking pictures of you or you taking pictures of me, and like, how do we get this like? You can't like you know do the selfie thing, mm -hmm. and so um, I asked my buddy Alvaro Sancha, who's a photographer based in northern Spain, to come along, mm -hmm. and and um, and you know get some pictures of us. And so he did. It was like a beautiful time. He's a he's a great guy, awesome. You know now one of my my closer friends, and mm -hmm. um, we realized that on on one of the drives home, it was cold and you know wind blowing sideways like one of one side of the car was wet and the other side of the car was dry and it was like this just like like very like middle of nowhere like iceland weather and but it was beautiful because we had it's the beautiful. entire day and, and we had we yeah and and we, it was like the entire day and we had um we're super duper tired and but we were like wait like this is like a really, really cool experience, right? Um, having kind of two sides of the ocean, right? Like, you know, New York and Spain and meet somewhere in the middle, 
right? Mm -hmm. And and create something cool. And so we just, you know, at, based on that, just started talking about like, hey, you know, would, would people be interested in, in doing this sort of thing? Um, not necessarily go to Iceland and like, you know, just do shoots, but like, would people be interested in like joining worlds and and creating something together, right? And so we started asking around, like people were like, yeah, that, that'd be a pretty cool thing to do, right? And um, we knew it was not going to be easy uh, uh, because it's you're you're literally trying to connect, you know, two different sides of the ocean together, and um, so it was going to be a bit of a challenge, and um, and it is, right? It's not it's not an easy thing to launch or, or run a workshop. Um, but that's kind of like where it was, right? The idea of, um, or what the workshop stands for, like the basis of it, right? Um, this idea of, uh, you know, creating the, this idea of connecting, this idea of, um, of, of having a community and something that is a bridge between those two communities. And that's, I think, what, um, what we'd like remote to become eventually, right? Is, is a bridge between not just like two communities, but many different communities. Um, and as a way for, for people to kind of, um, you know, cross over or, or create or, or like push themselves and whatever they need to, right? Whatever that bridge could signify um, is, is what, you know, we hope that Rumble could be. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's a, I guess it was like, yeah, of course, of course. I could see like, you know, so what you said, like you're um, specifically talking about Spain, like um, connecting that to, um, to here in New York. Is that, so like yeah I, like, I I could definitely see that and like I think it is you know it, you guys are doing a great job with a workshop and being able to show that and you know like there's something about unique about your workshop where it's like like what you mentioned like you're trying to connect the other side of the world to here in New York and there is some like feel of the workshop that's what really attracted me to your workshop and so are you doing the workshop with, you know, your friends back in Spain or who's in the workshop that's, you know, doing this with you? So right now we're, I mean, you know, it, we're, we live in the COVID era, right? So, you know, everything is kind of, you know, tentative, right? But we launched the workshop for this year with uh, the dates November 19 to 21 of, um, of this year. So it's going to be in the fall and it's going to be in New York City. Um, so the idea is that like we're you know going to uh, host the, the workshop here in November and um, you know have some speakers come in and you know the folks from Spain come over and kind of share in that community of, of being together because like you know again the idea is is that like we do things differently here in New York and they do things differently in Spain right so we could learn from those differences but also there is a lot of similarity between um, between photographers and videographers and creatives in that industry, right? Mm. And so um, learning not just from the differences, but also learning from the similarities and, um, you know, networking and, and helping people just, you know, build those bridges and connect. Mm -hmm. Like what I said, like uh, that workshop that you, you guys, uh, I, that you accomplished, you guys did a pretty good job, you know, like especially with the, you know, the branding that you guys put out there and it's pretty much like it's, it's kind of inspiring. I, I think, and Jose, I'm sorry, I think you're still uh, more sophisticated than me, but like how you, I love how you spoke of yourself. You really like, seems like you really, you know, you know, I guess, well-spoken, <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> Anyways, I just, I'm just, I didn't know you were like this, you know, just, I was just scrolling through your website. I was like, oh my God, this is literally so deep. Like just reading your thing, um, your website, like information now, here you are talking with me, you know, I'm, I'm quite shocked or like surprised that, you know, that's cool. Like, I just love seeing different kind of personalities and how they spoke of them. So it's kind of like, cool. I, I guess that's my, Thanks, man. That's what I'm trying to say, but anyways, yeah. Um, how, how is, um, with the COVID and happening last year, um, did, I'm not sure if you had like, um, any workshops last year, but like, has that, has COVID affected your workshops or weddings or have you done some weddings, smaller weddings last year since? Well, I mean, um, with the workshop itself, we had to, we had to postpone the workshop, right? Like we were, mm -hmm. um, you know, two or three weeks out and I don't quite remember it's like two or three weeks out and, you know, folks had already bought tickets and oh we had God. the studio space uh, and, and, um, you know, and so everything was set. Right. Um, 
and you know just for for safety reasons and and you know like it, we had to c cancel and and push to to, to this year did what's you, that you i'm sure you did you have to like partially refund uh your um the people that were coming to the workshop yeah i think you know like part of you know being in the industry is that like i w we were experiencing you know for me personally from a from a business perspective i was experiencing like a lot of you know folks asking about logistics and scheduling and what happens if we we need to move our dates right i'm talking about couples right and so for me like the, the idea there was like you know well they need flexibility right and so um you know taking that and just like looking and shifting like pivoting and looking at like the photographers and who wanted to come to, to the workshop and learn they're asking for the same thing and so we essentially yeah we we were as flexible as possible and um you know lucky enough that you know some folks were like you know what like let's just um wait for the the thing to blow over and we're gonna we're gonna stay and you know just um leave it as a deposit and some people really need had that need right like it was a you know um, an absolute financial need that they they needed uh, the refunds, right? And so, so okay, that's fine, right? Like it's the human thing to do. And I think in a situation like that, um, you know, being anything less than human is 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 not uh, acceptable, right? Like you have to be human, you have to be flexible. And so, so yeah. Um, but no, now with new energy, we could you know plan forward, right? And and the folks that that retained the in the ticket and were like, yeah, let's do it. And like they're like all the way, you know, hundred percent. So you know, just grateful for that. I did see that you have an incoming, um, um, what do you call that, workshop coming in like this March, right? Or is it next month? No, no, no. So um, that would be, the next one is in November. November, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So nothing yeah. recently, um, I mean, nothing uh, upcoming soon, but November is your first workshop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think, you know, the idea was to give enough time for people to plan and to, um, you know, to to create like a, um a space that's both safe and and reasonable and feasible right like uh right now if if we were to try to do something in march i think it'd be a bit more complex right if you think about like the borders and think about like you know what you would have to do to to run such a workshop and then just for safety purposes right like um it didn't quite make sense and so we thought that the fall might be a better look okay and I was, uh, as, I was asking this question to myself um, since we were talking about the workshop. Uh, I know you mentioned that you did see like an influx of like more uh, workshops coming in from, you know, especially like uh, photographers that they want to make their own workshop. Like what, what do you see like in this industry, like, or the mistakes that other photographers are doing or like, is there that you see that uh, in like creating their own workshop or do you think like, I'm sure it's not easy we're making a workshop and like what's your advice or like what are the mistakes that you see as like other you know creatives making their own workshop like or what's your advice with you know with them if they're trying to make their own workshop I think like yeah you know, now this is from a teacher angle right like um if you want to teach something you have to have clear objectives about like what exactly you're you're, you're going to teach and what exactly you want the students to get out of it, right? Um, and then, you know, based on that um, objective, you want to be able to measure somehow, right? What did they learn? Did they not learn? Where could they, you know, where could they brush up on skill X or where did you miss and where did you, where were you successful, right? And so um, I think looking at uh, workshops as a, if you're, if you're teaching a, a, a skill, right um then i think you have to be a bit more methodical about how you teach that skill and um you know to some degree be able to evaluate and measure um where your students where the learners are gaining and and leaving gaps in that specific skill now that's if it's a skill right if it's if it's speaking if it's like something that's like more of um of an inspirational thing, then I think that's a different animal altogether, right? But if it's a but if, but if it's something that's like very like like a technical, right? Then then there has to be um, a certain structure that's involved that will help move that student that learner from wherever they are, right? 
um, whatever baseline that you you know measure in the beginning and then move them through phases of, of becoming more more and more proficient in that specific skill that you're trying to teach mm -hmm. and i i do see yeah i mean i've been to a quite different kinds of a workshop but yeah i mean some workshops are you know like like what you said it could be just an inspirational thing but like i mean like it seems like your experiences from being a consultant or being a teacher it seems like you know what you're offering to your client is like it seems like reasonable and i feel like i feel like i'm sure they they learn a lot from it just from going to your workshop but like i feel like i see a few photographers maybe you know maybe might not have that mindset of like you know the technology like the technical stuff or you know starting your own workshop i feel like some of them are just still new or i don't know like it seems easy i guess nowadays to create your own workshop you know if you're a photographer you could just you know oh i can open my own workshop but like i'm sure there's so many things behind like creating a workshop and you know what you're trying to offer to your you know to your students pretty much yeah i think you know like if if you're a good student you mm -hmm. know if you walk into a, a situation you'll probably learn something right but you know um, if, if you were going to attend a workshop and, and this is me like if i were going to go and attend a workshop then i would really uh try to do research and, and find out like does this is this going to hit the the stuff right that i think will move me from x to y to z or whatever you know my goals are right um and if it is then look into it more right um if it's not then look somewhere else you know because i think that there's you know one one of the things that 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 in learning teaching and learning um and this goes for teaching history or 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 science or math or mm -hmm. or, or photography or videography or, or whatever you're teaching is that um there's no like just one like one what do you call it like um there's no like cookie cutter way there's no one mold that will fit every single person um and the way that they learn like to learn and need to learn mm -hmm. right and so the more that person can determine whether or not that space is right for them and the more on the other end from the instructor's part the more they can teach to the different types of um attendees the better the end result is going to be mm -hmm. and i'm sure you, your students i'm sure like the students that are going to your workshop are looking for the si same style as what you guys are creating and i'm pretty sure like so like that's really inspiring because you're getting students that you know look up to you guys and you know they they want to create work like what you guys have done and accomplished and i feel like you know that's such a great thing for them to just you know go to a workshop that they really feel inspired and like i feel like i've seen like photos of like the the workshop that you've created and i, I can see the type of people like you know or like the, the work that you're um putting out there i feel like it just attracts the energy i feel like they it just kind of connects like you know what you put, you're putting out there you're kind of attracting the those students and i feel like that's that's so cool like you're able to create such you know workshop like that and i'm sure you guys you guys are such an inspiration of like other creatives that are just starting out or you know they just been following your work i'm sure that's you know again it's mysterious your work <laughs> that's my that's my outtake to it <laughs> and and i think like you know yes and and everybody starts somewhere right like um you know i remember when i first got like a like a digital slr it was a like a canon like a rebel xti or xxi one of those two right and you know it's like taking pictures of like the tops of buildings with like the little air conditioning units at the top of buildings and it's like <laughs> not not good <laughs> and and you know like everybody starts somewhere and and um as you work and this is like something that my 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 cousin uh who was a great artist um he used to say and i and i always carry it with me is that like you know you're as you as you grow older and more refined in the things that you do you know you you start to develop your tastes and they start to get narrower and narrower and narrower the more expertise you get like your your tastes become narrower and much more narrow 
right? And so narrow that like, you're, you're incredibly good at that thing. Um, but to the disadvantage sometimes that you see like this, but you don't see everything else around. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so in, in the evolution of like, a person who's learning in art and in, in creativity or in the creative arts. Um, you know, I think it's important also to, to keep that in mind where it's like, okay, um, you know, you have a specific style or you develop a specific style, but also that it, it could be okay to break out of that style, even though it is something that defines or has defined your work and that you get clients because of this quote unquote defined style. Right. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it's an important question to ask and to answer, like, when is it important to to limit yourself to style and when is it important to uh, disrupt yourself and, and come out of that style, right? And um, depending on how you answer that question is going to determine your trajectory mm -hmm. in the next, you know, days, weeks, months, and years as a, as a creative. Yeah. yeah, you you truly look like an artist to me, um, Jose. Like, you, you even have, like, the, <clears throat> the look as well. Yeah. Um, glasses <laughs> the glasses the, 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 <laughs> yeah i know you have everything you get the coffee you get everything <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> oh my god it was you know i love um, i love being able to connect with other creatives and especially you know talking about your perspective in like this industry and like it's such a great you know experience right now like just talking with you um yeah um what what's I, I asked my the creatives this like what's your what what's what's your goal for this year like what are you trying to create this year that you know that you want to do aside from the workshop I know you're doing that but like is there anything else that you want to do for yourself for to you know for your brand or like whatever your goals are for this year I think I mean of course the workshop as you mentioned um, that's taking up a lot of you know a lot of time a lot of energy and a lot of planning. Um, but I think just continuing to um, to grow and connect more with the people that um, that I work with, right? Like, I think you know, for me and, and the way that like I photograph and the way that I shoot, energy is really important. And and in order to have energy, you have to have connection, right? Um, and you know, cultivating that and and trying to see where. I can create more links and linkages and how to, how, how to connect better with people. Um, you know, the, the folks that I work with, um, I think that would be more of like where my, my kind of my charge to myself is like, how do, how do I connect more with, um, with the people that, that perhaps are, are motivated, inspired by my work and, you know, and perhaps the, the folks that I am like actually shooting with, how do I, better connect with them right um how do i read how do i read that room better you know um so to speak like if, if i can do that then then the rest is is easy right? mm -hmm. um so it's yeah. it's such a cool thing that you have a different outtake of like uh your perspective on shooting you know shooting um weddings or just you know couples because you see it as like the energy the connection that they have you don't see it as a like you know what looks good unlike the camera but it seems like you're seeing it from a different perspective where you're seeing it into like you know the en the energy of the couple you know i just like how did you use that word and also i'm sh like how you see it that way as well i because i would never see it that like i see it differently i just see it like you know what looks good in my camera you know like what, what looks good in like what i'm getting in the camera but it seems like you have a different outtake of like you know how you shoot your your uh, style or your you know your couples which is pretty cool <laughs> yes i think yes and it's also important to like kind of know your, your your technical stuff right like um you know like if you know your camera fairly well right and and you know your light and the light you like to shoot with and you know that if you shoot with this light that you're going to have to on the back end post process in a certain way combining all those 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 uh that like knowledge that you have and then after that just put the energy in right like so like you know what i mean like knowing your knowing your stuff and knowing how you're going to do it pre-edit and then post-edit and kind of like having that in your mind and then really being strict with how you do that when you're in the situation and then after after that you know or not, not after that but alongside that 
you know, being like, okay, so I know that that's my instinct. How do I get the, the energy, the genuineness in here? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what makes, um, makes the photograph, not for the photograph, but like, you know, like for, for the, for the people in it that you're going to, that you eventually, you know, are going to have to send that to, right. That's Definitely. not for you, right. That's not for you. That's Definitely. for, that's for them. Right. And, and so like just having that in mind, it's like, okay, who, who are, who are the people that are in front of me and, and how could I best portray that in this space that we're in right now? Mm-hmm. Not necessarily, this is my, not, not necessarily, this is my way of like how it looks beautiful and do this, right? It's more of like, okay, so this is what's in front of me. How can you, how can you make it, um, how can you make it real and how can you make it come out? Mm-hmm. And so that's, that's kind of like just my approach um, to it. You know, it, it works for me. Um, Mm -hmm. but you know, everybody's different, right. And some, some folks need to start in a different space and then, you know, get to maybe the same result. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm so amazed by the accomplishments that, that you, you've created, especially like coming here at 11 years old from a different country. That's kind of like seeing myself, you know, 11 years old, being able to be successful throughout time. And I'm so inspired about like what you accomplished here in New York, like, like, you were featured as well in like many websites or like, you know, wedding, wedding, what do you call that? Wedding um, for platform. And you were, you know, you were featured as that. It just kind of inspires me because you came from a different country and then now you, you're like one of like the best, you know, photographers, you know, in, in here in New York and especially being able to create a workshop bringing that like you know like what you said different world for i just that's what i see it as like it's really mis- like inspiring to see like you were you guys were able to create such you know two worlds into this work workshop and i do see that in your workshop but it's so like it's unique i, I do see like there's a feel into it that's what stood out to your workshop to other workshops that i've seen on instagram or anywhere else but yeah like i really appreciate that what you guys are doing but um i don't i don't want to take more time away from you but i really um i really am thankful for you uh, for you coming into this podcast i know you're a bit you're, you have a busy schedule but i, I really appreciate you coming to taking the time and you know sharing your um your knowledge and also like i guess you're it's a, just talking to you it's a different ball ball game like you're just sophisticated and like i love how you spoke of yourself and like just you know just hearing your story and such a pleasure speaking with you, Jose. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm glad we were able to connect, but um, I'm in New York as well. So, you know, maybe I'll just see you in New York sometimes. I mean, this might not happen, but like, maybe I'll see you somewhere there. <laughs> we're going to run, run, run into each other on the street. Definitely. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, would you be, I've been recording this, so would you be okay if I post this on into YouTube just so? That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. I'm Whatever so starting up the podcast and hopefully it will, it will just grow and also like attract, you know, more people from a different platform and we'll see where it goes. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Jose. I didn't want to take more time away from you, but I will keep in touch. All right, brother. Take it care. It was great talking to you. All right, bye. Okay. Thanks, Ethan. Thank you.